Okay, welcome back to our next lesson in chapter six, and today we're gonna to be looking at energy conversions. So now that we've studied energy and we know a little bit about the types and how to calculate them, we know that if you have a moving object that's kinetic energy and we calculate it with EK is equal to half mv squared. If we have an object and we lift it up into the air, we know it's gained potential gravitational energy and we can calculate that with EP is equal to mgh. And in the last lesson we saw that if we have a spring and we're gonna compress it, that's also another type of potential energy and we can calculate that with EP is equal to half kx squared. So now that we know how to calculate all those individual types, we can now look at how it's gonna get converted between these different types. If we go from one type like chemical and convert it into some other use that we have for that energy. So let's just look at that energy conversion in a little bit more detail. Um, so say we start with some gasoline, the type of energy that would be stored in that would be chemical energy. This is energy of the bonds and the molecules in this chemical and they have this stored potential energy within them. Now, if we take that and we just pour it on top of the car, there's lots of energy on the car, but it's not really achieving the type that we'd like, so we need to convert it. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add flame to it, and we're gonna light it on fire, and we're just gonna start a combustion reaction with oxygen. Then it's forming new chemicals, which have less energy, and they release some of their potential energy that they had at the start as thermal energy. So it gets really, really hot. Once there is that heating, it's also gonna increase in its volume, and there's gonna be a lot of pressure of an expanding gas moving to the outside. So that's gonna be kinetic energy and that pressure pushing towards the outside, and we use it to take a piston and push it in the downwards direction. So now I've gone from chemical energy to thermal, now we have kinetic energy of a piston moving downwards. That's connected through a whole bunch of other machinery uh, to eventually lead to turning of the wheels, which moves the car forwards with kinetic energy. So that's the kind of conversion we're looking at, how you can start with one type, go through a whole bunch of conversions, and end up with something that we want. That's why it's practical to be able to convert energy. The kind of classic example of simple uh, conversions of energy is a pendulum. Now normally we have a nice steel mass that hangs from the roof to show a pendulum, uh, but during isolation here we're gonna use a charging cord from a computer uh, to show a pendulum and its motion. But what happens with a pendulum is we pull the mass up and because it's raised off the ground, it has EP or potential gravitational energy. But then as you release it, it starts to fall, it swings down to its lowest point, and here it can't really go any lower. It's lost all that potential energy it had from being raised up, and it's all gotten converted into kinetic energy. So up here, it was a high height off the ground, and here it's moving quite quickly with all of that energy being turned into kinetic. So we're having EP, gravitational, getting turned into EK, and that's a really simple energy conversion. But more than just the energy is being converted and what types is being converted between, we want to know, well, how much energy or speed or height do you get in an energy conversion that's coming out? So how could we calculate how high something's going to go or how fast something's going to go? I think reference another example of energy conversions in that a bouncy ball also converts energy. It starts with potential energy, you drop, it's going to kinetic, it bounces and then goes back up to potential. Now I'm not sure if you have a similar experience, but when I was young they used to always sell these balls saying that they have this amazing bounce, they would bounce super high, and they'd bounce nearly back up to how high they bounced before. So you drop them, they move down, they bounce back up, but they would always be a little bit lower than when they started. It bounced maybe like sold them as being really close or near the same height, but I could never get it to go actually to the same height as before. I thought, well, why don't they just design one that's gonna actually go higher than when you bounce it? That'd be like the best bouncy ball ever. But unfortunately, the universe doesn't allow it. The universe does not allow anything to bounce higher than it was dropped. And this is the first law of thermodynamics, which says that energy cannot be created or destroyed. The amount of energy has to be the same. So unfortunately, you cannot create a bouncy ball that bounces higher than it was originally dropped. See here, if we bounce it, it comes back up a little bit higher. You will never find anything that's gonna be allowed to do that. The maximum that you can get is it goes right to the same point and it has just the same amount of potential energy as it had to start. Similarly with a pendulum, if you pull it back, it's got a certain amount of EP at this point. If you let it go and it swings and comes down this direction and goes back up to this point, it can only go to that same height that it was originally dropped from. It can't go any higher. But just to make sure this is true, we're going to test it with the hanging laptop cord here. So I'm gonna pull it up to my chin. I'm gonna release it and hope it doesn't come back and uh, hit me in the face. So I let it go and 
Well, fortunately, it doesn't come back any higher than it was released at the first point because the law of thermodynamics says that it can't go any higher than it was released. So fortunately, I'm not getting hit in the face with the cord. That demonstration definitely scary when it's a big heavy mass, but you still get the idea that it has to be equal, right? Energy cannot be created or destroyed. And so how we're going to write this is say that all the energy at the start is equal to all the energy at the end. So over here is EI, which is energy initial, has to equal all the energy at the end with it, which is energy final. So that's how we're going to start any energy conversion question and kind of list the types of energy we have at the start and the types we have at the end and make sure they equal out. So we'll do two examples here. The first one is with a pendulum. It says a pendulum is pulled up so it is 2.0 meters above the ground. When it's released, it swings to its lowest point, which is 0.4 meters above the ground. What is the speed of the pendulum at its lowest point? Okay, so first we have to recognize that energy is being converted. It starts with potential energy here, and it finishes with kinetic energy here. Now, this lowest point for EK is not on the ground. It's still said it's 0.4 meters above the ground. So I'm going to put in those values that it said in the question. We'll put this here from the bottom to be 0.40 meters. And here, probably not quite drawn to scale, but is uh, 2.0 meters. So how we're going to start these energy conversion questions is EI is equal to EF. Not a hard way to start it. Now we just have to look at what types there are at the start and at the end. And we see at the beginning there is only potential energy. It's not moving at this point. So we have EP there in the form of gravity. So I'm just going to put E. P for our initial energy, and that is equal to our energy final. Now this has kinetic energy here because it's moving, but it also has potential energy here because it's raised off the ground. So we can put that it has EK plus EP. Now you can totally solve it this way by putting MGH is equal to half MV squared plus MGH. However, the easier way to solve it is if we get rid of this potential energy at the end. You think, well, how can we just get rid of energy? It can't be created or destroyed, which is true. But potential energy is relative. Potential gravitational energy is based off what you're referring it to. So in this position here, two meters above the ground, we're comparing how much potential energy at this position compared to on the ground. All right, and in here, we're saying how much potential energy from 0.4 meters above the ground to the ground but you can compare to whatever you like. So say that I dug a hole right here like this, and that was like another 0.5 meters. And this was now higher above the new kind of ground because I dug a hole. Did it really gain more energy in this position? Not really, I'm just comparing it to a lower point. So it doesn't matter what you compare to as long as we compare this object and this object to the same thing. We're mostly interested in the change in height or the change in potential energy. So I'm going to clean this up a bit and now try considering what if we make this point, this lowest point that the pendulum can go, the ground. Right? Consider that to be where EP is equal to zero. If I consider that, I have no potential energy at the end. All I have at the end is kinetic. And at the start, all I have is potential energy. And it's just getting converted into kinetic. Now, this wouldn't work if we use the 2.0 meters as plugging into our EP equation here, because that's comparing it to the ground. Now we have to compare it to right here and say, well, how much did the height change as it swings all the way down to the bottom? And since it's only going to 0.4 meters above the ground, from 2, this difference in height is only going to be 1.6 meters, and that's what we're going to use to calculate the EP. So if you like comparing it to the ground, that will work. If you use this equation that I have on the left and use the ground as 0, that will totally work. But it does allow us to remove a term if we call the lowest point in the pendulum 0, and we're just looking at the change in height. So I'm going to write it like that, where I can cross out this other EP, and now we just have potential energy at the start, kinetic energy at the end, because we called this the place where it's our lowest point, and EP is equal to zero. Now I can go MGH is equal to half MV squared. Notice there's mass on either side, so I can cross that out. I want to solve for velocity, and this is at the lowest point, which it asked for in the question. To get rid of the half, I'm going to times by two, and to get rid of the square, we're going to square root. So it ended up being 2 times g, which is 9.81 meters per second squared, times by the height. This was the change in height. Remember, 
meters square root, and I'm getting an answer there of 5.6 meters per second is its speed at the end. So begin with EI is equal to EF, figure out what types you have at the start at the end, and then solve your equation. We'll look at one now with a spring. This example says that a 50 gram mass rests on a spring that has been compressed 10 centimeters. The spring has a spring constant of 200 newtons per meter. If the spring is released, how high would it launch a 50 gram mass? So over here on the right, we're beginning at this height. The spring will be released. The ball will go up into the air and it's looking for how high it's going to go from its original position. So we do have an energy conversion going on here as well. So we're going to start with EI is equal to EF. We have to look at all the initial energy. So in this position, initial, it's not moving, so there's no EK. And similar to that last example, I'm going to call this height of it on the spring to be zero potential energy of gravity. I'll consider this the lowest height. So there's no EP gravitational, but it does have EP in the spring because it's being compressed. So that's the type of energy that we're going to be starting with. I'm just going to put EP there. I know we don't really have a sign for of a spring or for gravity, but hopefully you can just know from the scenario. Now we'll see at the end when it goes up in the air. In the middle, it's going to be moving pretty quickly, but we're looking at just at the end here because that's how we're going to find the height. So at this point, it doesn't have any kinetic energy because it's completely stopped at its maximum height. It doesn't have any spring energy, but it does have potential gravitational, its highest amount right there. So we have EP is equal to EP as our formula. Now let's remember that this started as a spring, so that's half kx squared, and then finishes off as a gravitational, which is mgh. Now mass doesn't cancel in this one, that's why I gave it to you in the question. And we have to focus on what we're solving for, which is height, and we'll divide by mg on this side, kind of getting h by itself, those cancel. Now we just gotta plug in our values, so half is 0 0.5, times k, it already gave us 200 newtons per meter, times by x, this is the amount the spring is compressed, it's 10 centimeters, but we have to remember to put that into meters, so 0 0.1 meters squared, and divide by mg, our mass is 50 grams, this has to be in kilograms, so 0 0.05 kilograms, all right, times by our 9.81. And when we plug that in, I'm getting an answer uh, that rounds to 2.0 meters for our maximum height. All right, so same way, starting with EI is equal to EF, figure out what you have at the start and at the end, and solve your equation for the asked for value. Okay, that's the end of the lesson right there. Go give the practice questions a try. Let me know if you have any questions, and I will see you in the next lesson.